Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Miguel back again with another video. And uh, just as I got my hands on the iPhone 14 Pro today, um, I wanted to do a comparison between the two phones, the last year's flagship, the iPhone 13 Pro Max against the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And this is gonna be more of a speed test, which I will get to in the later part. But I also want to just look at uh, the aesthetics of both phones and, and try to figure out if there's any differences, uh, which we know they're not because this year was not really a redesign year. Although we have been pretty much seeing the same shape and the same camera bump for the last couple of years. But nevertheless, the this year was more of a feature or internal update where um, Apple and really improved uh, on the internals of the iPhone, not only with uh, some hardware, but mostly on the software side of things as well, like the Dynamic Island, the better camera, the A16 Bionic, and many other things as well. So um, I just wanted to start by quickly doing a comparison between these two. So looking at the design of both of these phones, um, now pretty much the same exact size on the back as well, we have the triple camera array. But if you guys notice this year, we actually have um, a camera bump, which is a little bit bigger on the iPhone 14 as compared to the iPhone 13. It's a really slight difference. It's not really noticeable by that much. I also did notice that these the bumps on the, the camera bumps are a little bit more protruded or, or kind of outwards as compared to the iPhone 13. We'll go ahead and also compare them as, as how much they, they flex here. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have a, a little bit of flexing here with the iPhone 13, a little bit less, uh, pretty much the same, I would say. But yes, there is flexing because obviously you have that camera bump on the back. Apart from that, the button placement is on the exact same place. I do see a very slight difference in the power buttons when it comes to the positioning of them. Um, I don't know if you can see that in camera, but there's just a very slight uh, difference on the uh, positioning. So the iPhone 14 actually has the button just a little hair on the lower side as compared to the iPhone 13 Pro. Um, on this side, we have pretty much the same things. There's no difference whatsoever. You have the SIM tray on the exact same side. Um, you have the buttons, the volume rocker buttons, and also the silent button here, which is on the exact same uh, placement. When it comes to the displays, that's where you actually see a difference between both. The iPhone 14 is rated for 2000 nits, but I, I have to be honest, I really didn't see that much of a difference when it comes to the display brightness on both of them. I actually, um, it's, it's difficult to tell. I don't know if you can see on the top camera here, if you can see any visible differences here, let me know. But for me, pretty much they're, they're about the exact same. I haven't tested them outside in the sunlight, so maybe I'll be able to see a difference there. Uh, but uh, indoors, the brightness is pretty much the exact same. Um, and uh, there's one main difference, which is gonna be with the notch. So the iPhone 13 Pro uh, last year had a smaller notch for the first time ever. Um, and this year, Apple actually decided to kind of get rid of the notch completely um, and have this small cutout, which they're calling the dynamic island. So if you can see over here, this dynamic island can be used with a lot of apps. So it's integrated with a lot of, a lot of different apps. For example, I have the timer here, so I don't have to be inside the timer to actually see what's going on. I can just see exactly how many minutes are left. If you want to interact with it, I can press it once and it's gonna take me inside the app or I can also long press on it and it will give me a brief um, you know, description of what's going on as well. Uh, when it comes to the colors, uh, we have both of these are the, the featured colors for iPhone. Uh, for the iPhone 13 Pro, we have the Sierra Blue, which is the special color that Apple announced apart from the gray, the white, and the gold. And for the iPhone 14, we have this uh, dark or deep purple, uh, which is, again, replacing the Sierra Blue. In my opinion, both are really good colors, but I prefer a darker tone phone, so the iPhone 14 uh, for me takes the points here. One other difference that I wanted to mention when it comes to the displays is going to be the always on display. So you can see here that the always on display has been um, is, is actually now a feature on the iPhone 14 Pros. So, so once you lock your screen, it goes into this darker uh, mode. Uh, and if you want to wake it up, you, you can just tilt your phone up to yourself 
or you can simply just uh, cl click the power button and it's gonna come back up. So that is a new feature that's only for the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, when we talk about the performance, uh, this year we have the A16 Bionic, the last year's iPhone 13 Pro has the A15 Bionic. And there was one thing that I actually noted, which was um, later on kind of confirmed. Um, when Apple was announcing the uh, the performance and when they were rating the chips, the A16 against the other chips, they didn't compare the A16 to the A15. That is because the A16 is really not uh, that big of an upgrade. Nevertheless, it's a new chip. It's a four nanometer uh, SOC. So yes, it is a new chip altogether. It's better performing, but the difference is not really that much, which kind of piqued my curiosity into doing this video. So I wanted to see it for myself and that is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead and actually start doing um, the speed test. We're gonna start with a boot test first of all. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn both of these off and I'm gonna see how long it takes for them to boot back on. Okay, now that both phones are off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn them on at the same time. Sorry for the weird pose. I only have two hands here. So one, two, three. Okay, so uh, the iPhone 14 um, Pro, uh, just, just a millisecond earlier than the iPhone 13 Pro. Um, yeah, uh, immediately, <laughs> that's, that's, that's quicker, way quicker than the 13 Pro, which, uh, by, well, not by a lot, but yes, it was a slight difference. All right, so next up, I'm gonna start opening up some very generic apps. I'm gonna make sure that no other apps are open on both of these iPhones, um, just to make sure that no RAM is being used. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna start by opening the uh, clock application. One, two, three. Exact same, no difference whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and now open up the camera app. Okay, one, two, three. Again, no difference at all. Um, exact same uh, speeds, I mean, not even a millisecond of a difference here. Okay, next up, I'm gonna open up Safari. One, two, three. Um, yeah, exactly the same. So the app opened up on the same time, but maybe there was a millisecond of a difference when it comes to the browser. That really depends on the internet connection, but um, we are on the same internet connection here on both phones. Um, but nevertheless, uh, still no difference at all. All right, I'm gonna go open up the um, calculator. Calculator, okay, here's the calculator. Um, one, two, three. Again, no difference at all. Um, next up, we have the calendar app. One, two, three. Again, no difference at all. Same exact second. Okay, now I'm gonna keep these apps open and uh, because uh, it's utilizing some RAM, the iPhone 13 Pro uses um, DDR4X uh, something. The iPhone um, uh, 14 Pro uses DDR5 RAM. So I'm gonna go ahead and now open up uh, some uh, heavier apps. We're gonna go ahead and start with Asphalt 9. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, <laughs> it actually loaded just a second earlier on the, on the 13 Pro. Um, but again, nothing noticeable about a second earlier, which is really nothing at all. Uh, but let's just wait for the full game to boot up here. Okay, yeah, so it, it started off with the iPhone 13 Pro in the beginning, but then um, it, to actually complete the full application, um, the iPhone 14 actually completed that process. Um, so yeah, the iPhone 14 takes that, but again, just by a second or so. All right, the next app that I'm gonna open is gonna be Call of Duty, which is uh, quite a heavy game. So let's see how both of these perform. One, two, three. Pretty much the same thing. Um, Again, it, it, it looks like the iPhone 13 is taking um, about a second to open these apps earlier. Um, and I have to let you know that the iPhone 13 Pro actually has more data as compared to the iPhone 14 Pro. I haven't really fully set the iPhone 14 Pro, which may seem unfair. It does have data, but it doesn't have as much data as the iPhone 13 has because this is the daily driver. Okay, so um, it's now downloading the game or some settings. 
but again that has to do with the internet speed it really doesn't have anything to do with the uh, with the uh, with the phones itself but if you can see over here you can see that there's a little bit of a you can say maybe a distortion or some um, um, some corrections that need to be made uh, when it comes to the application so the call of duty logo here is kind of cutting off into the bezel uh, into the edge and on the 13 pro it's actually placed correctly um, I don't know if that's because this is a new phone and uh, there's applications that still need to be updated with the iPhone 14 Pro, I guess that's exactly what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and next up do the benchmark test now and I'm gonna run the Geekbench 5 on both of them and then I'm gonna run N22 and I'm gonna see if there's any difference in between them. Okay, one, two. So I'm gonna open up the apps on the same time so we'll see if they open up on the same time and then we'll do a performance test as well. One, two, three. Yeah, it looks like the iPhone 13 picked that up faster. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with a CPU test. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so if you can see, the iPhone 14 Pro has completed the test and there you have the scores um, on a single core. This was a CPU test on a single core, uh, 1,873 points on the iPhone 14 Pro on the iPhone 13 Pro 1723 uh, which uh, not really a big difference on the multi-score test 4712 on the 13 Pro and 5361 on the 14 Pro so there you have it that's just a that's that was the benchmark uh, Geekbench 5 test I'm gonna go ahead and now run the um, N22 benchmark test and see what it tells us one two three Okay, now I'm gonna start them at the same time. One, two, three. Okay. All right, so overall, as you've seen in the video, um, the iPhone 13, 14 has actually been, um, okay, so, <laughs> Actually, it, that just threw, it, threw me off because all of the video, the iPhone 13 was behind and then just suddenly right now, the iPhone 14, um, um, it just, okay, that's, you guys saw that, right? So throughout the video, the iPhone uh, 13 Pro was uh, a couple of seconds behind the iPhone 14 and just right at the end, um, it finished the test first. But nevertheless, the scores are in front of you. You can see here, that uh, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has 757,000 points and the iPhone 14 Pro has 911,000 points, which is, a, he, I mean, it is quite a big of a difference uh, when it comes to the performance and the score of both of them. You guys can be the judges for yourself as to uh, what you think was uh, faster, obviously the iPhone 14, but again, not really by much of a difference. Even the difference in the points here is really not that much significant. Also, the battery for both of them was around the pretty much the same, but after performing the test, you can see the battery on the iPhone 14 Pro is at 68%, whereas on the iPhone 13 Pro is at 72%. So it looks like um, the iPhone 14, yeah, it's actually a little bit, yeah, it's it's a little bit warm. That happens when you do an N22 benchmark test. So anyways, guys, that's, that's just a quick uh, speed test, a quick comparison between these uh, two flagships, you have the results in front of you. You can compare them for yourselves as well. And I'm also gonna do another comparison with the iPhone 14 Pro and I'm actually trying to get my hands on the S22 Ultra, which is gonna be a really good comparison. Uh, Android flagship versus Apple flagship. So we'll see how that result is. So anyways, guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, consider liking the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, bye-bye.